inside Louis Armstrong Stadium. The Swiss Master will begin things serving from the top of your screen. As a spot, the quarterfinals at stake. Veteran Robredo. Strange first Love volley the team. from Fetter. Rather than doing something with it, he thought, I'll just serve up nothing right to the forehand of Robredo. That's not going to work. Yeah, same thing from Fatter. Not a bad idea to come in because of how far behind the baseline no, Robredo is, but then he just pushes the volley to Robredo's forehand to his strongest side. He's going to make that passing shot. And immediately, Robredo, triple break point. He's not going to try anything different right now. He's good leading unless he doesn't break here. Well, you know what's funny is Federer is a guy that, when he was at his best, first game, one minute hold, always, it seemed like. He'd come out and smoke in the first game. Well, he's issuing himself a challenge. He's rising to it here. Erases two points very quickly, using his serve extremely effectively as Roberto can't find the court with his return. Yet still a third chance for the Spaniard. Better, Robredo finds himself a deuce. Just put him you know what's funny? Is, I know it's just first game, but love 40. Robredo had a second serve to work with. You're 0 and 10. You're 0 and 7 in the fourth round. He's got all kinds of goose eggs. He needed to break serve from love 40 down. Well, it's not game point yet, however. That was a good challenge from Robredo. Fetter is the one who's come out a little bit uptight. A little bit nervous, making some unforced errors. Chances, I'm going to burn you, and First Federer season. finds himself down one love. Well, we mentioned that it has been a while since Roger Federer has traipsed across the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center grounds to play in Louis Armstrong, and it has indeed been quite a while, seven years to be exact. Jimmy, I know you had that written down in your little notes there. It was Mark Chappell in the round of 16. Federer with a straight sets victory. And so because of his stature and his five titles here, this has become an anomaly to see him end up in Louis Armstrong instead of finding his matches all the way through in Ash. He obviously doesn't like it. Down one love played a pretty poor first game. A lot of unforced errors, a couple of very poor volleys for him. 
how important was that challenge for Robredo as well. Yeah, the momentum had suddenly switched badly against him at that stage. Oh. As we mentioned, Tommy Robredo has had a history of being able to get through the fourth round. That hasn't been a problem for him. He's been denied access to the oh, it's easy. Meanwhile, Roger Federer is looking to tie Jimmy Connors. The all-time record of major quarterfinals reached is 41. Butter's done it a little more quickly as far as number of years played than Connors. Connors got those 41 quarterfinals, but he's he played for over 20 years. Better is in full shape. This when he's not playing well, when he's a little tight. That's what happens to Federer in the last year. He starts mishitting. I mean, oh. Shank after shank. <laughs> Struggling for two games. He's already offered up five unforced errors to Robredo, who has won a total of eight points. So the Spaniard is relying. Well, on and gifts, two of the Federer. other points were. Gifts, even though they weren't unforced errors, they were volleys that Fetter had all kinds of opportunities with, and instead he just served up slow, nothing volleys right to the forehand of the Oh, Shot, I don't think Robredo would have missed against anybody Jeez. but that. Because he's still got a little, he's 0-10. Those kind of things are on his mind. That's a recognizing history stroke. Yes, because that was just a floating chip, and Robredo's a guy that doesn't make many errors off that type of ball. Oh. Sutter's doing his best to give Robredo some confidence. We'll see if he can, if he can take it. And they told him you're moving to Armstrong. He said, there's, a, there's more than one court here? <laughs> I thought there's only members. Ash. I only hit on Ash. Anna Wintour in the center of your screen. Editor-in-chief of Vogue magazine. Hi, Anna. Wait. No? Okay. Part of the Federer camp. She seems to be a constant, particularly here in New York. <laughs> is that awkwardness of the four hour plus delay. And then you're told, oh, you're actually gonna be able to play. 
but you got to go over to a different court than you were preparing for. They would have warmed up inside Ash today. Yeah, yeah. Over to Bredo. Saves a break point and moves to two up. Look, it, it just depends on the day. You can be more nervous, more oh, tense on days than on a day. day like today, if you were nervous, when you had moments during the day, there's no question that both players would have thought, you know what, we're probably not going to play today. It's going to be rained out. I can relax. I can think about tomorrow. When you suddenly do hear that game on, you can be a little tense. And it looks like Feder has even gotten team. nervous today. You can see that from Feder when he starts mishitting. He has started out this match for a couple of games with many misses. Could you make a case that it would be more disruptive for Fetter than Robredo in no. what's happened today? No. It's the same for both guys. It's just on the day who handles that moment better. and misses. 15. He finds himself in another hole. Fetter has a little tiny hint of disgust on his face. You don't normally see much from him, but there's just the tiniest, almost smirk of, come on, let's get it going. As you watch this match and the way Federer has started, you realize that you know, these guys are huge, the top couple of guys. And you almost forget it because of how consistently great the top couple of guys have been over the years. And I know Federer this year, it's been a little different for him. But that streak that he had of semifinals every Grand Slam, and these quarterfinals of every Grand Slam for so many years, it's incredible, really. They never had a match where he played like this and his opponent played yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to back aces and Federer finally on the board after a rough start. Down a break early to Tommy Robredo. Robredo inside Louis Armstrong. Tommy Robredo looking for a little of that tennis amnesia. You know, where you forget about the 10 times you played Roger Federer and lost every single it's one. He finds his way to an early break. Starts out to love. And now serving to protect his lead inside Louis Armstrong. Day eight in the 2013 U.S. Open. That's a little better from Federer. He's the weakest shot on the court would be Robredo's backhand. And if Federer can get to that spot, it'll open up some opportunities. That was a pretty severe forehand inside in while still moving. You don't really want to be hitting that while you're still moving to your left, but Federer handled it well that time. The first two points of this game, all of a sudden, Federer's no longer mishitting. Seems to have found his rhythm. A couple of nice rallies, and eventually Federer finishes it off. That time with a nice volley. I don't like the way Robredo sort of pulled up instead of running all the way through and trying to get to that forehand. He's a guy that normally can run all day, but he had some problems with getting the weapons. And obviously, if 
Robredo loses Jeez. his legs, then he's got no chance. That's one of his biggest weapons is his ability to scramble. And there's a good indicator as to why Federer got off to such a slow start and Robredo able to at least enjoy the lead for the moment, though under some duress here in game four. A lot of gifts from the Federer racket, uncharacteristic. <laughs> The This is the Federer that just hit the snooze button once too much, but now finally he's gotten out of bed. He's got his coffee, and he is motivated. That is terrific tennis and controlling Robredo as he makes his way towards break point. Yeah, that's one of those volleys. The passing shot was hit with plenty of power, but it, you just need to stick your racket, get your strings on that, use that pace against Robredo. He'd be better off hitting the ball with some dip. Took a little while, but Roger Federer right back in it, and Robredo has to be thinking, boy, I sure wish you would have stayed away a little longer. Two all, opening set. Two games Two all. Games. Uh, Robredo was under pressure in his opening service game, and this time succumbs in game four. Don't forget to go to usopen.org. It's your source for official online merchandise. You can get real-time scores, daily video highlights, press conferences, and so much more. Join the social media, and Twitter, and Facebook. It's all available at usopen.org. We talked, Jimmy, about these streaks that Roger Federer enjoyed going off memory. We definitely know because it ended at Wimbledon that it was 36 straight quarterfinals. I'm pretty certain the 14 straight semifinals you were alluding to, but maybe the one that really sticks out that I'd be curious to your opinion, 10 consecutive major finals. Wow. Could, that be, could that be duplicated again? I guess it could, I mean, yeah. but is Anything it likely? Anything could happen, but no, I mean, probably not. None of those records. Those records are ridiculous, what he's done. And especially because now there's such a, a stranglehold on the top, but of pretty equal players as far as ability these days. Djokovic number one in the world, but Nadal playing and soon likely will take over that mantle. And Murray now established as a double major champion. Federer is the one who's fallen away. I mean, frankly, he's seven in the world, seventh seed here. He's going to have his work cut out for him, even if he does get things right here with Robredo. Get to the quarterfinals. If Nadal's waiting for him in the quarterfinals, he's going to be in a little bit of trouble. That run of 10 straight finals, by the way, 2005 Wimbledon until here, 2007. Oh! Excuse me, 2008. How many of those 10 did he win the title? Oh, that's a great question. And that would be eight. Not a bad record. <laughs> and guess where he lost? French to Nadal. Yeah. Federer out front, opening set. Three games to two, first set.
Roger Federer has come back from a two love deficit to take a 3 2 lead in 20 minutes inside Louis Armstrong Stadium in a match that's been delayed considerably today. As we have reached the six o'clock hour local time and Jimmy as I know you know you put down and I owe you the money. I said people might not be paying attention to the numbers we throw out sometimes and you said oh they're all over it every time. I was remiss in mentioning a good nine other of the 14 semifinals. It's Time. 23 consecutive semifinals he reached at majors. I had a feeling that was a low number. <laughs> They're lighting us up like crazy, and good for them and good for you. So here, there you go. You were right. Don't spend that 50 cents all in one place. Don't you were. Federer has come alive, and that is bad news for Tommy Robredo, who has only been able to take a total of three sets off Federer amongst the 27 they have played. Brado competing once again in the round of 16 as he have seven times now here at the U.S. Open and unable to advance beyond this point. And on paper it looks like it's going to be a really really difficult task to be able to break any of these strings. Oh. Now, this wasn't a bad second serve at the body. Federer was sort of falling away. That's twice he's been falling away to his left and still managed to hit clean winner forehands. It's one thing you didn't see from Federer very often in all those streaks and runs that you talked about. He was always in position. Always looked as though he was not rushed. You see it a couple of times. He's gotten away with it, but... He hasn't really had his feet underneath him. Good job. Good job. They're starting to look better and better, but there's still shots like that. That wasn't a great approach for Mubredo. He should have made Federer move a little bit more than he did, and I'm a little surprised Federer missed the forehand pass. Well, another respect shot, probably, because he, Tommy knows he's got Federer a little riled up early, getting that early break. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A good serve from Mubredo that it goes off the frame of Federer, and once again, Conor Bredo finds himself even. Three games all, of course. Ending the run of three straight games for Roger. Good response, but once again, Federer not quite making the move. And we talked about some of the people who are fact-checking us on our numbers, and good for them. Tweets coming in, as well as tweets from at Renton Davies. says it's okay for Roger to make errors as long as he's being aggressive. Good prep for the Rafa match. I would say that depends on how many errors he makes. If he continues to make error after error, he doesn't get to Rafa. I mean, there's a there's a point in time when it's aggression for aggression's sake isn't really the best play. But you know, I, obviously he's he's found his rhythm a little bit after the very shaky start the first two games. If you know.
There is one way Roger could, could beat Nadal, and that would be to call me. I'll give him the strategy. There is a, play, a couple of plays that he could use. All right, so I'm going to pick up my phone. Let's pretend I'm Roger. <laughs> Let me dial your number. I got a <laughs> speed dial. There it is. Ring, ring. Hi, Jimmy. It's Roger. How do I beat Rafa? And I'll tell you in a second. First off, he's going to have to it's introduce all. court. He's going to have to serve and volley out wide at least once or twice a game because Nadal stands pretty far behind the baseline. You got to get him way out of the court and then just get your racket on the volley into the open court. That's the first play. Roger does it the opposite way. When he serves and volleys against Nadal, he seems to always do it from the ad court. He hits a slice to the backhand of Nadal, but that brings Nadal in the center of the court. So now you can't, you have no volley, nowhere to hit the volley. Nadal passes him on the next ball often. Next play is, and this is hard to do, but drop shot to Nadal's backhand. He always, if it's below the level of the net, he'll run up and chip that down the line. Always up the line. Always up the line. So you let him think that line's open, close it off. Yeah. And yeah. off game number he seven. He's Roger Federer. He's back down into the lead as the seven seed. Good day, sunshine, because the fans are delighted. The sun has started to shine after a day that saw a deluge earlier here in Flushing Meadows. Play suspended for over four and a half hours. They call the reassignment of this match. Fourth round encounter between Roger Feder and Tom Robredo to move from Arthur Ashe Stadium over to Armstrong. And there you actually do see rays of sunshine and shadow inside the court. Some people thought the sun might never come back, Jimmy. I was one of them, and I think maybe Feder was one of them also. It looked like he didn't think he would play when this started. Yeah. That's good stuff from Robredo. That's what he the tries job. to do is not hit backhands. He wants to play from that corner, from the backhand corner, hitting forehands. So Feder needs to go first to the forehand of Robredo, and then open up an attack to the backhand side. And by the way, that's what he has to the third part of beating the doll. That's what he has to do Four as well. Not just a drop shot and the serve and volley thing, but you also got to go big to Nadal's forehand early in the point, hope he overtops it, hits it a little short, and then you attack to the backhand. It's a bit of a strange error from Robredo, and that Federer wasn't really coming back into the court. He was giving up that point. Robredo just had to put the volley in. And that might come back to Hanna. From 40 love to Deuce. And very important game for Robredo. Jeez. Not only for the tenor of this set, but for the match as well. Because granted, two love is just one break of serve. The difference, and Federer made that up relatively quickly. But this would be a massive letdown if he cannot hold serve here. And three consecutive errors from Robredo, and he's in trouble. Better has had break points, Jimmy, in all three of the four service games in the Spaniard. Yeah, it feels as though this is 
history sort of causing Robredo these problems. He wouldn't have missed that high forehand volley against Daniel Evans when Evans hit a ball and ran off the court and wasn't coming back. He would have put it in, but against better, he made the error. Definitely Robredo's favorite forehand is that one, inside out. He goes there 75, 80 percent of the time from the center of the court and anywhere over to his left. And this time he followed it up with a pretty nice volley. Yeah, Robredo. Shows him backbone under adversity, Tommy Robredo. With a very important hold, saving four great games points. Points. route for to four all. Uh, there's going to be a lot of discussion, not only today, but perhaps tonight, and talking about what is at stake for this match as we progress through. You're going to hear Nadal's name mentioned very often, but you can't forget that Nadal still has to play Philip Cole Schreiber in order to book a spot in the quarterfinals. that that's going to be a victory for Rafa. As he leads Cole long. Schreiber 9-1 in their head-to-head -head series. But there is that one loss. Yes. But there is that one loss. It was on grass last year. For whatever reason, the last two years, Nadal's grass court game has, has fallen way down. Former Wimbledon champion, but has lost early at Wimbledon two years in a row. You alluded to it a little bit earlier, Jimmy, but I'd, I'd like to hear why you think Roger Federer seems to have a little run of shanks, balls off the frame, the inability, because he's such a clean ball striker. Normally, people are so used to him just ha having his way. So great, effortless. You know what? He's always had a tiny bit of the shanks when it's tight. The problem is, for 10 years, no one was making the matches very close. So he was so confident. But he's in a little bit of that mode right now after the forehand shank the point before a little anxious on that forehand and this has been the difference the big points when Federer did have tight moments against lower ranked guys he knew you knew the opponent knew Federer was going to come through and win the point against those type of players now you're not quite so sure well that's part of what that run of three losses in six matches including the shock loss at Wimbledon that <laughs> The mystique was off of it. That was mystique inducing. <laughs> Great serve and volley. Again, when you see your opponent that far back, look at where he's hitting this return from Robredo. Good job. You can get pretty close to the net for the first volley, and then you just got to get your racket on it and dribble it over the way Fetter did there. But even that shot for Fetter is more style than most players. Wow. That was pretty from Robredo. Good approach. Felt like Federer was in great control here. Robredo on the dead run. Just sort of pokes a backhand down the line. Let's add a little screen. This is a huge opportunity for Robredo. Saved a break point in the last game. Now this was a chance to convert one in game nine. And we'll see if Fetter serves and volleys again. Look at how far back Robredo ran. Oh. Tommy Robredo has a chance to take just his fourth set off of Roger Fetter in the opening frame of this round of 16 match. 
Tommy Robredo serving for a one set lead over Roger Fetter. Fourth round. Cut. Jimmy, opportunity by definition is a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. And there haven't been a lot of opportunities for Bredo, not only to take a set, but to really have the upper hand on Roger Federer in any form. He had a two-love lead. 24 and three is the set total between these two. Pretty one-sided. Yes. This game will go a long way in telling you if Bredo believes he can win. Serving first set in the first set to have a one set lead. Oh, he has it. never won the first set against Feder. He's won the second set in their matches three times. The three sets he's gotten were second sets. So he's never had a set lead on Feder. He's low 30 down trying to grab his first set. He never Ooh. We'll have a challenge it, from Robredo, yeah. I believe. On left base, the ball was called out. Oh, the ball was called out. I didn't hear the line call. Oh, I only Federer's saw Robredo challenge. making yeah. the call. I, thought, I saw the arm of Robredo go up. This is Federer's yeah. challenge. I guess Robredo lifted his arm to point over at the line to, to confirm that it was indeed called out. Shot too many to the forehand again. Great stuff from Fetter until the finishing blow with his volley. That's the third time he's just sort of served up a volley. And surprising, maybe he went to the forehand. Exactly. It required something still fantastic, needing to carve the outside of the ball to get it back in. It did, in. but you know what? That's the one shot Robredo does have. He likes that shot. As we've seen a few times today, doesn't mean he's always going to be able to execute. That time executes fantastically from love 30 to 30 all but after coming up with such a sublime shot coming outside the court to curve in for the winner Robredo Offers Federer great point. One of three on the afternoon is the seven seed. the first two points of that game. Robredo made a couple of errors early on. Five games uh, above 30 Persistence. lead, and it, it created the doubt in Robredo's mind. Again, he's never had a set lead against Federer in his 10 matches. Now 11th. Still has a chance, obviously, in this set. We're all tied at 5-all. Back-to-back breaks. We turn on serve as Federer puts forth. It's interesting is neither of these guys can seem to win second serve points. Federer is only four of 14. Two of nine for Robredo. So that's why we've had a couple of breaks each. Is when they're missing first serves, they're getting broken. A little surprising because look where Robredo serves them. That's the <laughs> fake drop shot. Turn your body sideways. So not just a fake drop shot, but fake it 
is if it's going to the backhand side. Look at this. And then at the last minute, just sort of a flick down the line. That's not a good feeling when you're on the out. You've been fooled that badly. Well, and you just saw the first step of Robredo, and he just got frozen. When yeah, he, he realized it was coming deep and not short. Broke his knees on that one. Better moving very quickly in this 11th game. Yeah, Robredo so far back, he's going to have to apply for oh, yeah. his ball kid or line yeah. judge. He's back against the wall to receive the serve. Moves in with the keeper behind the line. Good as Federer holds it love and finds his way to 6-5. Enticing matchup inside Armstrong. Tom Robredo, a bit of a gut check early, and it requires pretty, pretty strong fortitude here if he's going to hold to force a tiebreak or if Roger Federer is going to outlast him in this opening set. Broken in his last service game. Better has finally seemed to come into form. This is an interesting, to me, end of the tiebreak from the standpoint of robredo has got so much history to overcome. And Federer has sort of recent history of not winning the close matches that he's been in. So who's going to get a little tight towards the end in the crunch time? Talked about it, how the mystique sort of some of that aura of Federer stepping the court fell when Stokowski took him out in the second round of Wimbledon, Del Bonis, and then Brands. Yeah, who? 115 in the world, 114 exactly. in the world, 55 in the world. Suddenly people are saying, whoa, wait a minute. Yes. The Fed Express seems to have stalled. to any of those players because they really brought forth a, a tremendous game the exact perfect yeah, scenario yeah, for yeah, them yeah. to be able to win against Federer but now that some people those big game hunters want to have a chance it's like walking up to the biggest guy in the room and taking a swing at him thinking I, I can take this guy you think that but then again Robredo's lost 10 times to him so he has that history to overcome and it's just a question of you know, who's going to have more trouble overcoming their <laughs> problems Looks like Robredo's the one that's having a little more trouble. He served for the set. He's been in the lead through much of this set. And faltered right at the finish line. And now from 30, Love. Fetter gets back to 30 all with a little help from Robredo. Call and it looks like a challenge from Federer, I think, because it was a late call. Yeah, it took a little while for the line judge to get it out. Federer wants to challenge and oh, just missed the mark. And that means the hold for Robredo. Game. Yeah. Robredo. This is where I said, I, this is interesting to see. Hold serve. We're going to have a tie break. We've got some. Sort of weaknesses mentally for both guys coming in. See the tiebreak records for the year, as well as between these two. They played four tiebreak sets previously, but they've only played one in the last 11 years. 2007 Australian Open, the last time in the quarterfinals, Federer winning in straight sets, including seven, six in the second. Their very first meeting back in 2002 in Sydney, Federer won in two tiebreak sets, by identical tiebreak scores of seven, five. It's a long time ago, and Robredo has to just put his mindset right on focusing on each individual point now if he wants to emerge with a one set lead.
great stuff from Robredo at that point. You don't often see him controlling the rallies against Federer, but that time Robredo was able to push one off. Federer back. Aggressive points from Robredo on his serve in the tie break. He's gotten out to a 2 1 lead. You always can tell when Fetter's feeling a little bit of pressure when he gives that sort of grunting, come on type of. He thinks that that's an important point. Winning that point, take a 3 2 lead. He sort of sends a message as well to his opponent that he believes that was a turning point type of moment. We'll see if Robredo responds by getting a little tight. I mean, to run around, you do have to step out there fairly quickly, especially from that close to the baseline. Obviously, I don't think Robredo saw him as much as Robredo was deciding I'm going to serve down the tee for a second serve. First ace for Robredo as they switch ends. Tom Robredo knowing full well how important this is. Got out to a two-love start. Couldn't hold on. Fell behind after three straight games, but managed to regroup. Went to serve for the set, was promptly broken, but broke right back. A couple of holds get us to this 13th game. To avoid history repeating itself as it has done 10 times in the course of 10 meetings, a victory requires a big first step from Robredo, which would include this opening set tiebreak. Server is hold, all seven points. Considering there's been four, three. two breaks each in the set, I'm a little surprised that the server's doing as well as they have so far through seven points. So each time player comes up to serve, you think, boy, he's probably going to lose one of these two, and it'll be late in the tie break now. Fetter is to lose one of these two. Buffer, single mini break the difference, but the backhand, which he doesn't usually like to hit, likes to get around the forehand. He's been using effectively late in the set. Funny, he's so far behind the baseline that you can't power the approach shot through Robredo. You got to open up the court a little bit. There needed to be some angle to that approach. This is now a huge moment. Second serve where Federer is only winning 38% of the points. Down 5-3 already. Yeah. And Robredo standing so far back as Federer approaches, just able to time it and rip the forehand perfectly. Again, it's tough to serve in volley when a guy's this far back down the center. 
Robredo able to run around. He was going to be in the middle of the court. There wouldn't be really a place for Federer to hit the volley, even if he got his racket on the return. Straight points for Tommy Robredo nets him the opening set. Unfamiliar territory in their 10 previous meetings. Tommy Robredo has a one set lead. Would you have picked any of them and would you have picked Tommy Robredo? Well, no, you wouldn't have picked Robredo. You would have, could have. I mean, Ferrer might you throw his name out there, possibly. Even Verdasco, who has a few weapons to deal with, but I wouldn't have thought Robredo would be the guy. Oh! And the good news for Tommy is that now that he has taken his fourth ever set off Federer in now their 11th meeting, is it's not the set he usually takes. Federer's never taken the first set off Roger. In fact, all three previous have come in the second set. Something to build on and he's hoping that that trend certainly will continue. It's, it's his first lead ever against Federer. That's the bottom line. Fetter looks as though he's opening up the second set with a little bit different attitude. He's coming in. Oh. Fetter changing up the strategy. He's realized Robredo's backed by the fence. And he can't hit through him when he's back that far. So he's going to bring him in first. Hit a couple of short slices to start that point, and then ripped it deep. as he got that love 30 lead with the new strategy. He goes back to his old game, Fetter, trying to hit through Robredo. His favorite return was always that chip return. He keeps trying to hit over his backhand return. I don't think in this match it's going to do him a lot of good. over there in the player's box. There's a chance for Federer to gain the upper hand to begin the set. His fifth break point. They converted, converted to the previous four. Oh. Yes. Too many for anyone who watches the Swiss Master do his work. Upstairs, uh, and it's been helping Robredo, who also helps his own cause. Now picks up his third ace. Oh, yeah. to get the hold. He's been under pressure on his serve in four of his seven service games. Robredo has faced a break point. Center Federer has broken twice, but no joy for Federer to start the set as we take a look back at the numbers from set number one. Well, both players are similar in their winners. There's more winners for Federer, but only four more. A few more on four stairs, only three more for 
Federer, as opposed to Robredo, the first serve percentage made a big difference because both players were struggling on second serve point, but Robredo wasn't hitting many second serves, as you see. And I think that, in the end, was what spelled the difference. certainly enjoys a lot of support when he comes to New York City. He talks about his affinity for this tournament, no doubt why. Okay, he's got 40 consecutive matches here. Let's face it, Federer gets support everywhere that he goes. He's a crowd favorite. You find that's common? I find it common, yeah. Even... If he played Robredo in Spain, the crowd would be 50-50, you know, I would say. The Chilovs. They do love their winners in all of sport, but particularly here in tennis in 77 titles, 17 of which are majors. That's going to get you some attention and create a pretty strong fan base. You know what, it's, it's not just that he wins. It's, he's got some style. You know, he's got the prettiest game. Maybe ever. Makes it look effortless. Yes. Oh. Yeah, and there's some of that style in evidence as he effortlessly holds it low for one off. One game You're all. going to hear some of the carryover of noise from other courts. There's plenty of action around the grounds here on day eight. There's another Spaniard just nearby, literally tucked underneath Louis Armstrong Stadium on the grandstand. David Ferrer took the opening set off Janko Tipsarvich. Now the Serbian has set point five three in set number two. Those so you'll hear some of the cheering from that court trickling yeah, in. Yeah, those, those played. Those two played a tie break in the fifth set in the quarterfinals last year, won by Ferrer. Standing ovation, standing ovation before the tie break started. That's how much the crowd appreciated that matchup. Up from Robredo. Again, Feder didn't seem to recognize that bringing Robredo forward first was working. Did it for two points, got up above 30, and is going back to trying to out hit him. Tough to hit through Robredo right now, as far back as he's standing. He's faltered a time or two, hasn't been able to keep it at that really elite level, and that's stubborn. He's stubborn with his game. <laughs> Tried at that time. Tried the short slice, but I agree with you. There is a little stubbornness to him at times. He has that. Remember at the beginning of the match when I said you play someone that's beaten you so many times, you try something a little different. You could make that argument for him against Nadal, that he's got to try something a little bit different.
And Roberto with the hold. Finds his way to 2 1 lead with a set already in his pocket inside Louis Armstrong as round of 16 coverage continues in the U.S. Open. Federer Roberto, the 11th meeting as Roger Federer serves 1 2 second set. Fifteen. Oh! Challenge coming from Roberto as his forehand tries to find its way to curve back into the court and get the passing shot. It worked effectively in the latter stages of set number one. He'll wait for the replay inside Armstrong, and we'll show it to you at home. He was very close, but he will lose a challenge. One millimeter difference. Tommy Robredo will lose a challenge on the set. Better being more aggressive coming to the net. He started so towards the last stage of set number one. He came in 21 times. In the opening frame, winning just 12 of those points. He's a perfect five for five already in set number two. As he looks to hold at love for the second time. Second holds a far cry from how this match began as each was able to break. Second, second, but cir similar circumstances. And once again, I remind you to go to usopen.org. Hit Twitter, hashtag usopen to get yourself in the conversation about the final major of 2013 or go to facebook.com. No matter how you get there, go to your browser and type usopen.org. A plethora of information will unfold before you. That's a double fault partly caused by Federer. He is putting some pressure on Robredo's second serve now. He's ripped a few and come to net behind them. He's standing inside the baseline, sending that message. So. He's missing his little slice. He must not be hitting enough of those any longer. He's now turned into a guy that likes to rip the second serve return. And against Robredo, he's going to have to bring him forward first. What I was talking about earlier, Fetter, he just does things with great style. So even that, the way that swinging volley and the drop volley looked, it's pretty to see, and that's why people seem to love him all over the world. Oh, oh down goes the Fetter, lost his footing, and he hit the concrete pretty hard. I mean, his, the first second he was out, he had his eyes closed. Well, I think the carryover effect is we know the courts have been slippery all day. There has been rain, there's been problems, but just to have a moment to have yourself sort of think, do I have sure footing today? Will I be able to get through this match without... I don't think it's been a problem. We'll take a look at it. He ran wide, he got there fine, but then he was in a hurry to get back. 
just I'll take a moment to relax. You know, <laughs> sometimes you're a little embarrassed. You went down and you, you lay there a little longer, make people feel sorry for you for a second. 15-40. Break point for Federer. That's the kind of shot that you don't expect from Feder over the last 10 years. He's got a little bit of momentum. 15-40, he needs this game. Second serve, misses the return. Pretty benign serve, and he hits his 21st unforced error for the match. Yeah, a 90-mile-an-hour serve in the middle of the box, exactly. Summing it up, really, his last two points is the problem for Federer in the last couple of months. He's just not winning the big points the way he used to. Challenging. It was a fairly late challenge, but the umpire's letting it stand. Ball seemed to just pick up maybe a touch of speed at the end if it caught the line and skipped. Yeah. And yes, it did. And that gave Roberto the problem, but why not? Uh, the challenge. Uh, take the chance, but it can't overturn the call, and Federer with a third try in this fifth game. Evade on break chances. Jeez. In the match so far, 0 for 4 in this set. Surprised he wasn't a bit more aggressive with that return. I mean, I think he tried to be aggressive at 50 40, missed that time, tried to be safe. Hitting too many tops from back in against Robredo. Robredo is so far back that he's not going to be able to hit through. Uh, and that's he's causing it seems to Federer to hit even deeper with that right. tops from back in, and he's not measuring the court right. And when Federer was dominating Robredo over all those years, it was in the day when he'd use that slice back and he'd almost force you forward. He's got to go back to that. Game for a greater where he faces break points, this time three, able to save them all. And puts his knees back out in front. Already up a set, Roger Federer. Familiar circumstances in many ways for Tommy Robredo, playing in his seventh U.S. Open round of 16 match. Has not been able to move beyond this part into the quarterfinals. He's also taking on Roger Federer in the round of 16. Amongst their 10 previous meetings, seven of those Thank occurred you. in this very round, Thank you. including 2009, right here at this very event. Straight sets victory for Federer. That's not going to happen today. Maybe, just maybe, history might be turned on its ear as the number seven seed is having difficulty with the Spaniard early. A familiar pattern is emerging for Federer in that he's not winning the big points. And that's what's been happening to him for the last couple of months, really starting at Wimbledon. And let's not give Tommy Robredo a short thrift. This is eighth round of 16 at the U.S. Open, not seven. 0 for 7 coming in. Slice that skidded. Robredo, he's not going to out top spin Robredo. He's a clay court. Oh. 
to start the point with serve out wide. In both courts, when a guy's standing that far back, open the court up. for Fetter. Seems though Fetter's lost his ability to hit that shot. And you know which shot I'm talking about, Kevin. I think it's he hit a short, low slice. It wasn't a drop shot. It sort of brought the player up into no man's land and not on his own turn. Forcing yes. him to come into the middle of the court, which left him vulnerable to a pass either side, a lob. Toward, yeah. And yet it seemed like it was just going to be a normal slice that would have some depth on it. So you kind of get caught in a tricky situation. doesn't seem to be as effective as he's, he's not finding that range. It's either too short, which brings Robredo in in a decent position, or it's too deep and he can hit it and stay back. 13 games in the opening set. Federer committing 14 unforced errors. Just the sixth game of set number two, and he's approaching that number already. of this match about who it would disrupt uh, more had been scheduled on Arthur Ashe Stadium. Four hour delays moved over to Armstrong. First time for Fetter playing here in some seven years. Seems to have disrupted the seventh seed and five time champion much more. But he gets the hold and they split six games in this second frame. Going to get to look at the over above. Second, second. That is the overhang literally from Louis Armstrong Stadium, or excuse me, from Arthur Ashe Stadium into Louis Armstrong Stadium. At some point, that will be blocked by the new roof that will go in over Arthur Ashe Stadium. There will also be one constructed over Armstrong. And the grandstand is just nearby. That will be relocated almost to the other side of the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. So fans enjoying the chance to look down on greatness. And the threat he is under from inside Arthur Ashe Stadium. Not the greatest seat on the top of Ashe looking down at Armstrong, but it's better than nothing. Well, if you're a Spanish fan, then you've got the great opportunity to double dip. You got Ferrer just beyond that in the grandstand. You just a little bit over. Triple dip because Nadal's coming on stadium in a minute. Well, there you go. See? Good value for the ticket. It is.
Brennan's gaining a little confidence in this set. I know he's been under the gun a number of times on his own serve and managed to get through it, but he's hitting his forehand a little bit bigger than he normally see. He normally has a lot of spin. He still has that spin, but he's hitting through the court as well a couple of times. seeming unfazed, but this is an area that Federer has started to use a bit more. Already in the set, 10 trips to the net, eight times successful. And Cohn always to. looks unfazed. <laughs> he does. He does a great job of sort of having that poker face no matter what. But he's got to be churning a little bit inside. The way the last couple of months have gone and the way this match <laughs> has gone for a set and a half. really found a way to become an irritation to Roger Federer. There have been a couple of moments that he's made Federer look bad. In fact, that he's leaning the wrong way, unable yeah. to read the direction of the ball. And you don't see that often from Federer. It's happened about, twice yeah. in this game. A couple times in the match. It's just unfathomable that one of the best movers, if not the best mover ever, has been so put in so off balance. Tommy Robredo, each time he heads to the chair with a lead, has to feel that much more comfortable with his position. Well, it's a new position he's never been in before. Overwhelmingly, the calls from the crowd seems to be supporting Roger Federer, and that's not uncommon. But Tommy Robredo is starting to garner some support, as many may be realizing that a supreme underdog in this match in the round of 16 is starting to show his true colors here in this competitive spirit. It's been a fine performance from Tommy Robredo. He's trying to take advantage of what has been a subpar performance from Roger Federer. Robredo just called a Federer on Federer. That's that slice backhand in that mid court short, low, uncomfortable position. Now he did a little differently, hit it down the line. Federer's really can't figure out a way to win second serve points when Robredo stands at the fence. I think you hit the nail right on the head, though, with those two words, uncomfortable position. That's been Robredo imposing himself on Federer more often Federer than the other way around. Federer might volley here in the second serve. Hard to believe against Robredo because he was just such sort of easy fodder for Federer all these years. They're around the same age. Federer slightly older. Having just celebrated his 32nd birthday, not even a month ago. This is what happens to Federer when he gets tight now. A couple of short forehands, he shanks them. And just like that, Robredo's been the one under pressure on his own serve. Federer's been holding pretty comfortably in this set, but now love 40. of bewilderment well, inside Louis Armstrong Stadium because so many supporters of Roger Federer are not used to seeing the five-time U.S. Open champion in this position. Tommy Robredo has broken Roger Federer at love and is now serving for a two-set advantage. Having entered the match winning just a total of three sets, lifetime in 10 meetings against Roger Federer. This is a big moment for the Spaniard.
Breda served for the first set. And wasn't able to hold on and served it 5-4 in the first. This is oh, feeling a little different now. As it feels as though Breda's starting to gain some confidence. This would be a way for Federer to sort of gain some momentum back if he can break here. And a sense of urgency as he comes forward again. A dozen trips in the set. that he actually got a little power off of. Thought Long 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 hit that forehand. Federer was in that position, he'd be in trouble. But Federer kept it low, it skidded. Start thinking, is Federer slower than he used to be? Because it didn't seem as though Robredo, well, I've seen many of their matches, he never seemed to be able to hurt Federer. That shot was just a routine shot, really, that Robredo hit. Federer was rushed. He was just floating to the ball. Better as you're used to seeing, taking that forehand so early that you don't have time to react. I suspect we'll hear from Federer if he's able to get this break. Hasn't been very demonstrative in this match, but this might be the time he lets out a howl. This chance, not on the first break point. He's come up big with the forehand when needed. With the forehand pass, Federer keeps testing it. If he come up here and just gone to the backhand, he probably would have been in great shape, but he went to the forehand. And before Bredo gets there from that side, he's hit some brilliant passes. Thank you. Still has to contend with a second break point to get back on serve. Federer 0 for 5 in this set of break chances. For six, Robredo one for one. So, I mean, that's the difference. Robredo has played a borderline flawless match in his regard and how he wanted to approach better. He's done everything to irritate the seven seed as well as come up with the goods when under pressure. Charge. I thought, yeah, apply pressure. There's a pressure uh, 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 Breda looked off balance, but I don't know how he managed to get that ball to go down the line. Uh, he's just showing a whole sense of composure that he hasn't had in previous encounters. A whole lot of self-belief. And he has put himself to set point for a two-set to none lead. beaten Roger Federer, but he's a set away from doing so in the seventh seed in a massive hole in the U.S. Open. Back inside Louis Armstrong Stadium, if you're just joining us, first of all, where have you been? And two, you probably are on 
scratching their eyes, rubbing them, saying, I can't believe what I'm thing. seeing here. Roger thank Federer thank serving to start set number three, down two sets to none to Tommy Robredo. Man, he has beaten all Whoa. ten times they have played previously. And Roger Federer's going to have to do something that he's done eight times before in his career. Today, it looks like a really arduous task. Eight times in his career, Roger Federer has come back from two sets down. It's his first all the way back in 2000, right here in the opening round at the U.S. Open against Peter Vessels. Yeah. More importantly, in recent history, Federer able to come back from two sets down twice in 2012. First at Roland Garros in the quarterfinals against Juan Martín del Potro, and then in the third round at Wimbledon against Julian Benetton. Got a supremely motivated opponent across the that. net. Tommy Robredo played about as well as he could possibly expect to play against the five-time U.S. Open champion. Set number three and Federer trying to dismiss all those memories yeah, 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 yeah. from the opening two frames as he gets out to a one love lead. Let's see what happened in the second set. Federer did up his first serve percentage by quite a bit in the two because he was losing virtually every second serve point. Hit a few more winners than Robredo, but far more unforced errors. That was the difference. On top of that, 0 for 6 on his break chances and Robredo was one. There's a combination of things going on as Robredo's taking a little bit of a tail type of feel. Just two sets to love. Having a slight letdown. And then Fetters also relaxed. Sort of you know, being more aggressive, going for his shots, making them early on. We'll see if he can continue if he gets a chance, if he gets the chance to break. Well, that sort of had a little more kick on it than you want to see for the show. Fetter's head, even though he was inside the baseline. You saw the problem for Robredo normally with Fetter in this point. Backed up and gave away so much court for no reason Third early in that rally, and it allowed Federer to take control with that forehand. Now that Federer 
It has that feeling of being a little looser to me right now. Early stages of the third set. He's got a break chance. He's got a second serve. Can he finally convert one of these? Yeah, missed out on all six tries in set number two. Thank you. Somebody yelling out, disrupting the toss of Tommy Robredo, even though it was a sport, supporter of the Spaniard. He's able to regroup and fend off the advantage. Two for 11. No break chances. I mean, it's starting to get frustrating if you're for Roger. Continue to win the big points, that gives you so much confidence. That was not the case all these other matches that these two have played against each other. Big points were always won. If there were big points, some of them would be pretty comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Roberto again ending off with great points, as you said. Wang yeah, yeah, yeah. the big points okay. extremely well. And for a guy who's just been dominated by his opponent, he has stood up to the task and the challenge. Spaniard finds his way to one all in set number two, saving nine break points, converting three of his own six break opportunities. Fetter continues to be confounded by how to handle a man he's dominated in the past. Two seconds serves in the set has served and volleyed them both. Yeah. Yeah. Three three yeah. and three three of second serve points. And he's only lost one point on serve in two service games. Finds his way to the lead. He has won set number three. The quarter of the round of 16 is made up of Spaniards, including Tommy Robredo, who has a two-set lead on Roger Federer. Why not? Why not expect the success that Spaniards have had here over the last couple of years at the U.S. Open, and particularly in 2013? Robredo, winner of two titles this season. <laughs> one of six Spaniards to win at least one title in the ATP World Tour this year. Lovelace is in the top half of the draw and will face world number one Novak Djokovic. He has a title, Feliciano Lopez and Albert Montañez, each with a single. Ferrer and Robredo, each with a pair. <laughs> and then there's Nadal with his nine titles on the year. The potential matchup for the winner of this contest in the quarterfinals. Now Federer's come out more aggressively. Each set, he's gotten to that a little more often. In this set, he's serving and following even on second serve. And that's a sort of a signal. I don't think I can win from the baseline. I'm not going to out-hit Robredo today. So I'm going to have to do some good work getting up to the net. Better can get leads on Robredo's serve. When will he break through? That was a big gift. Well, it was evidenced by his number 12th break point. He's had lots of looks in multiple games. In multiple games. That's, he's, it seems every game 
the Robredo serves. He's under a little bit of pressure, but he manages to keep holding. This one will be a little tougher and love 40. Slice it, skid it off the line, then he had a swinging volley. Yeah, now in the fourth quarter, and it's this point went on. We're bringing on all kinds of trouble here. Federer didn't do much with the overhead. That was the overhead. Robredo was there comfortably to hit a forehand, and Federer missed the volley. losing his mind. I'd be snapping a racket by now. That's why we don't let you bring rackets to the booth. I know. Third chance for Federer. And wow. Brado handcuffs him with a serve to the body and three break points quickly Jeez. disintegrate. Disintegrate might be out of work because it has been just a difficult day. Frustration, thy name is break point conversion for Roger Federer. He's 0 for his last 10 break chances. That was a little bit of a tight air from Andreda. On such momentum, he probably thought ahead and said, you know what, I can't lose a break point. This I'd get tight after that last slice back in in the middle of that from Federer, and he tightened up himself. Another chance for Federer. <laughs> sort of a strange mix for Federer in his break point chances. He either gets aggressive and makes an error. Then the next break point, he says, okay, I don't want to make an early error, and he gets so tentative that it allows Robredo to control things. That was touched by Fetter. Play from Federer, but you know what? He keeps going behind Robredo. Here's another look at it. You'll see the chest. This backhand path is going in and deflected wide by Federer's racket. He's got to start hitting that volley into the open court rather than always trying to go behind Robredo. Robredo's starting to sense it. Better crisper volley from Federer that time. And 20 minutes Jeez. into this round of 16 contest, the crowd just seems to want to lift Federer up, try to get him across. He keeps being stymied by the effort of Robredo and by his own inability to execute on the big points. Tommy Roberto, of course, as he's been able to hold Federer off six times, uh, uh, 13 uh, of the 15 times. But again, for the Spaniard, he knows all too well. How many looks can I afford to give before Federer finally finds the answer to the riddle? Yeah, let's, we'll find the answer in a Apparently a couple more. Yeah. Jeez. More than 16. <laughs> I 
He was two of four at one point. Okay. He has missed out 12 straight. Even Anacone sort of turned his head away. He looks a little disgusted. Disgusted. With what he's seeing. Big serve that time from Robredo. 26. Just a shade under his fastest off from the night. 28. Tommy Robredo once again denies Fetter the lead. Love 40 down. Love 40 down. And in that point, Federer had an overhead. And five break chances. If you want to catch up on scores in real time, you can go to usopen.org. You can check back to court 17 as you watch this match as Milos Raonic, the 10 seed, takes on Richard Gasquet. Up a set, winning the first set in the tie break. Oh! And one love in the third. Or tip Sarevich and Federer on the grandstand. Paul Schreiber and Nadal. Nash, all available at USOPEN.org. Oh. Oh, this <laughs> could be a tough game for Federer. Man. He had some momentum. He was applying all kinds of pressure to start the third set. And now all of a sudden, not converting all those break chances, he's going to feel some pressure serving it to all for the first time. We'll see how he handles it. Disappointment of not being able to break through the service. Chino. Sometimes that carries over and makes you susceptible in your next service. Game. You feel even little, Roger yes, Federer. No question, especially right now. Roger Federer's not not himself. I know for many Roger Federer fans, this will almost be blasphemy. But there's a self doubt creeping in. I believe there could be. I mean that's. What this, when you're not winning big points, that's generally what it is. Actually, a pretty poor game from Magreda. Those are not big serves. Better almost thrown him off by taking a little off his first serve the last two points. Again, second serves. Better has been serving in volley in this set. Let's see if he does it again. Yeah. You know, one of the easy ways to get yourself back in this match is to keep yourself in front and hold serve. He's managed to do that all three times. Better. A 3 2 in the third. A lot of people circled Roger Federer versus the Spaniard in the bottom half of the draw, that it was almost a foregone conclusion, but they were thinking about the round of eight. Well, the round of 16 has produced a very compelling 15 Federer Federer. versus the Spaniard as Tommy Robredo has stepped up and taken the opening two sets, serving to keep pace in set number three. Bredo tries to deny Federer entree into the quarterfinals and a potential meeting with Rafael Nadal. That is way off from the distance as far as Federer fans are concerned. As he tries to mount his ninth career comeback from two sets down. 15 all. 15 all.
crowd really trying to get involved here, help Fetter out. He's played Third some shot. brilliant stuff. There's an example of that, overpowering Roberto on that rally. Yeah, they seem to be trying to just will him yeah. to be able to execute when it matters most. And he's proven he can get to break point. He's just getting across from there. <laughs> Terry, you see that shot and you think, man, it would have been nice to just hit a solid approach instead of trying to hit a clean winner, but it's easy to say. To execute. amount of real estate that was left 36. open as he commits his 36th error. Bredo manages to get to three all. Federer camp now starting to show signs of concern. This is serious business as Robredo is three games from the finish line. He's trying to read Anakin's lips because he was he was giving him a little coaching there. That wasn't just come on Roger. I don't know what that means. That one. I'm sure it didn't mean hit your first forehand long. pattern we've seen from Federer. He's holding serve comfortably, holding serve comfortably. Suddenly, he's almost breaking serve, and then suddenly he plays just a shocker on his own serve. He finds himself in trouble. There's a look at the end for the So Roger is 38 in all. what he's been doing with Roger. It's just cruising along, looking like he's going to be able to hold serve with no problem all match long, but suddenly he'll play just a shocking game. And we talked about it, about the expectations, the ability to think that he would have converted any one of the dozen break points that he's had over the course of the last two sets. And as it manifests itself, he's starting to slip. Slip in this game, and he has committed four on four stairs. Federer is going to challenge Wait to see. It looked as though he seemed to indicate. He did challenge, I think. It's just, I don't I thought I heard the umpire. Robredo will look up, yeah. and he believes it was long, and it was. Yeah, so yeah, a yeah. break in love, and Tom Robredo has the upper hand at set number three. Already oh, two sets easy. in the lead. The Spaniard looking sharp. You can only imagine how Tommy Robredo would have felt this morning, popping out of bed, thinking, all right, it's number 11 versus Roger Federer. I haven't beaten him 10 times, but I'm just going to try something different. I'm going to come out with a game plan that seems to attack, frustrate, hope maybe that Federer's play isn't quite up to par. I might be able to get a couple sets out of him, maybe even a victory. But he's now just two games away from a straight sets win at the U.S. Open. But Federer has won five times. He hasn't not reached the quarterfinal in nine years. Robredo breaking for a 4-3 lead, serving to consolidate and put himself that much closer to a monumental win in his career. That is not the way to start a career game for Robredo. He just sent a huge message that, you know what, I might not be ready to beat you. I don't know if Roger will be able to handle that message because he's been so tight himself. Oh. That's 
Still relying on a lot of miscues from Federer. Yeah, I mean, that was, you've just gotten your opponent. He's just thrown in a double fault. He's sending the message, I'm tight, trying to serve out, trying to finish this match against you. And then you send the first return 20 feet long off a average serve. They're both tight. It's a big moment for Robredo. And just has to found his group. Oh! He's now committed five unforced errors in the last seven points. And Robredo has won 10 in the last 13. In large part, the Federer just unable to find the court. It's perplexing. It's not as even if Robredo's throwing anything at him that is no, it that's tricky. Just regular <laughs> regulation serves. Good drop shot, actually. Surprised he didn't cover the line. Just pinched that line a little bit more. It's the obvious spot to go to, the easiest shot to hit for Robredo. But he made a good run. 40-15 with a little help from Federer in this game. Three <laughs> bad return errors for Federer. And I don't know if he has that fight. It's a confidence thing. I am shocked that after a double fall, Federer played the game he played. Three straight games for Robredo, and now Roger Federer, who first appeared at the U.S. Open in 2000, got to the third round, lost to Ferrero. Three consecutive round of 16 appearances, losing to Agassi, Mooney, and David Nalbandian in 2003. Since then, nine consecutive quarterfinal appearances at the U.S. Open. He's serving to stay in the tournament. <laughs> Federer had looked so good in his first three rounds. Looked as though he was Gaining a little confidence. He played a great match in Cincinnati against Nadal. Yeah. Now the crowd is really going to try to pick him up. And Roger Federer isn't even thinking about the support. He's thinking about how to find his way between the lines because that has eluded him over the course of the last three games. So important to just try to. Find a little run of momentum here. <laughs> well, the greater challenge thought it was out by, well, just about that much. Second serve from Federer. <laughs> Second serve that Federer started using in this third set. It has worked for him. That statistic has gotten a lot better. He's only lost one second serve point in this set. and he's relaxed. Starts out each set on fire, ripping winners. He's now stay, serving to stay in the match, but he's, he's somewhat relaxed on his own serve. So he's played well this game. Quick 40 love lead. It's a three all and three four where he can't find the court for a minute on his own serve. Oh. because even with 12 titles to his credit and six major quarterfinals, he's going to serve for the biggest victory of his career. You know, one thing about Federer here recently, he played a great match in Cincinnati against Nadal, but if you remember on match point down, he had saved a bunch of match points. 
And on the final match point, Nadal hit a ball that was actually wide. Federer didn't challenge. It would have been wide had he challenged. He let it go. You're getting a feeling here that, I don't know, he wants to be off the court the way he's played the last couple of games on Robredo serve. Robredo is tight as a drum trying to serve this out. And Federer's just got to take advantage of that. 